Well, we're really happy to be here today. Um, I'm Lisa, and just to avoid passing around this microphone, which we're going to do throughout, um, it's Mary Hanneman in IAS, um, Sarah Pyle, who was <coughs> graduated as an undergraduate um, in 2018, is now a master's oh. student in geospatial technologies, um, and Misaki Seto, who's graduating this year um, with a degree in biomedical sciences. So the project began actually in the early 2000s when the University of Washington conducted a historic preservation uh, study on the building of the Japanese language school, determined it couldn't be preserved. Lisa and I got involved in interviewing former students of the school. We interviewed 42 students in Oakland, LA, and Chicago. And we've had student researchers throughout the project. They've done everything from transcribing the videos to uh, work that you'll hear about from these two students today. Um, and it's also resulted in a published article with Sarah um, called Remapping Tacoma's Pre-War Japantown, Living on the Tide Flats. The um, project really kind of expanded from uh, being a project about just the Japanese language school, and it expanded more into a study about uh, Nisei identity, identity creation. And we're now in the last stages of putting together our book manuscript for University of Washington Press. So this is one of the maps that I started my research with. This map was made in 1926 by historian Kazuo Ito. And this is kind of his sketch up of what the town looked like um, and this is where I started my research, and I put all of this into <coughs> GIS, a mapping software, and then I added all of the data that I've collected so far. So this is one example of a place I've collected data from, and the data I'm specifically talking about are spatial data, data with an address, data that people mentioned, oh, I remember this place was across the street, or it was near this hotel, or I think it was next to my house. And in combination with all this information, and information from books. So there's a few books around that have listings of businesses, um, mainly hotels, barber shops, laundries, um, places like that, and put all that stuff together into one big spreadsheet. And I have come up with about 400 unique addresses with an exact address. Um, this is an example of one selection of my spreadsheet. So you can see I have the address, the name of the place, exactly where I got it from, any notes that were also in the book, and then you can't see it, but there's more other stuff I need. Um, but yeah, so right now I'm in the process of putting all that into the computer and mapping it, so it's really cool. Um, this is what I had completed last year when I was working on this project for my undergraduate senior project. Um, and this is just information from the interviews and the ETO map that I showed you, and from here I've up with like 200, 300 more points to add to it. So I'm really excited about it. So I have been translating the Japanese Nisei student essay, and those essays are in a special, special collection in you know, Seattle, and those are kind of really old, 50 to 80 years old, and easy to block and very dusty. And we cannot bring no pen, we cannot bring a uh, jacket, bucket, backpack for the uh, security, and no picture without permission. And there's also an example of what I translated in so far. And the top one is really close to the modern Japanese language, so easy to translate. But bottom one is really different from the modern Japanese language, so I feel so hard and they spend so much time to translating. And then my goal is to understand background of Japanese American in pre-World War II Tacoma. And then my challenge is 20th century Japanese and 21th century Japanese language are so different. And the Japanese and English are so different language too. And also it needs really a lot of knowledge of the Japanese American history. So I need to spend time for the study and the research. And then, so this translating tells us a lot of things. For example, how was the school life for the student? What was studying? What they are struggling? Why Japanese language is very important for the Japanese American? And also, we can tell, we can know why Japanese, how Japanese American people are thinking about Japan. So there are a lot of stuff we can learn from translating. 
And also, I learned so much things as a Japanese student. So, for example, the Japanese people do not really know the history of Japanese American history. And also, Japanese American really spend so much time and hard time for creating identity. And the Japanese Takuma Language Center, like Takuma Language School, was so important for the student identity, language, and culture. So as you can see, they both brought really a lot of their own unique skills and talents and background to the project. It enabled us to do a lot more with the project than we expected because they were able to go through a lot of material quickly. They were able to kind of bring their own interests to the project. And I think it's been good for them to give the chance to do this. So the specific contributions of Sarah, um, she's really helped with the visualization of Japanese Americans in Tacoma. Great example is her work with the um, Japanese presence in the Tide Plats and in the lumber industry, and that's the map that she created there. And also the 400 sources is an incredible um, resource. And Misaki obviously brought a, her Japanese language skills and was able to go through a lot of documents um, very quickly, um, as she talked about in her. I could say lots more about Sarah. <laughs> so, as she was, talked about, she, dealing with handwritten Japanese documents is a real challenge, really a challenge for me. And she was, we were able to kind of work collaboratively a little bit with the translations. And especially, I remember at one point she said she talked to her grandmother about working with some of this old, you know, early 20th century material. Um, and so this is all contributing to the book project, um, which is interview based. It's using a number of collections at UW libraries. Um, and we're really emphasizing this notion of bridging as well for the second generation Japanese Americans, so much more processual and emergent understanding of identity. So I'm an historian of Japan. I'm not an Asian American historian. Uh, my research, though, is covering J Japanese history at the same time period of, the, of this group that we're looking at here in Tacoma. And they, the Issei brought with them really this strong imprint from Japan, and they pass that on to their children. I, and as a cultural anthropologist, I've always been interested in the intersections of spatiality and subjectivity, and the interview narratives that we have from those um, 42 people emphasize the spatial reference over and over again. So we really have looked at this um, as a key component of the second generation Nisei identity formation. So we just want to say thank you. Um, it's a more robust uh, manuscript and public history um, resource uh, because of the work that the student researchers have done, and we want to say a special thank you to Sarah and Misaki. <laughs>